Hello, uh, my name is Tekla Schiphorst. I'm a media artist. I'm also a professor at Simon Fraser University in Vancouver. Um, I work with graduate students and I do a lot of research around sensory technologies. So I design, explore, um, build, test, and work with people um, to create and actually really look at what the future might bring in, um, in the ideas of sensory technologies. So you might be wondering what sensory technologies are. <laughs> um, well, we know what the senses are. We have um, sight, uh, which is vision, obviously. We hear. Um, we have tactility, and touching is a really important sense, but so is tasting and smelling. And we have other senses as well. We have kinesthesia, that's how we move, how we balance, how we know ourselves in the world. But there are also subtle senses. Some people might call them things like intuition, or you might think of them as even telepathy. Uh, but these kinds of ways that we know our inner selves and our outer selves physically, and in an extended sense, is a part of um, the senses. And sensory technologies emphasize the senses, both our own, but also how technology can extend our senses in the world. So um, there are many examples in technology, and I'll talk a little bit about my own work in uh, sensory technologies. I've worked in um, wearable technologies where fashion is combined with garments that do things like vibrate in the linings and let us know that somebody else is breathing, or share our heartbeats with one another through visual projections, um, or technologies that actually let other people touch us either through iPhone technologies or through touching something on our own garment that is then felt on somebody else's garment. So those are ways that actually we can communicate or, or extend our communication with each other, especially if we're in a different location than another person or groups of people. I've always been really interested in sensory technologies even before they existed. And one of the reasons is I have a background in both dance and performance, so I like to move and I like to create, but I also have a background in computer science, so that I like to program and design and think about what future technologies might be. When I started doing this though, there were no such things as interactive performances. Okay, I may be not that old, but still technology has grown so much in the last five and ten years. What, what's possible now and what's going to be possible ten years from now is it's exploding um, in front of us. So, uh, for example, I, I, um, when I was younger than I am now, um, maybe even as young as you, I actually um, worked with choreographers like Merce Cunningham to design choreographic software that people could actually use to design movement in a computer. These are the kinds of things that are very, very common these days and don't even seem like anything special. But to come up with these ideas and then even have them accepted in a world that thought that was crazy. Um, people were afraid of things like, oh no, if you use the computer it means nobody will dance anymore. Actually, it actually helped people dance more. And it began to allow us to explore things like two people dancing in different locations, ideas of telepresence, ideas of dancing actually with things like robots in a space. Because technology is so pervasive, we can imagine times when what we wear actually will talk to us, may make suggestions, may make us either healthier or actually excite us. So that these kinds of ways in which we move in the world or actually communicate with others. Um, one of the things that I've said is that telepathy is the ultimate wireless network. What if our technology allows us or helps us to think with others, or even maybe to hear what others are thinking and feeling? These things can help us. They can also be kind of scary, and so issues of privacy might come into it. But the design of these kinds of technologies is actually something that's here now. But the really important thing that we need are people that can think into the future, that can think of how we use what's possible now and to create what people haven't thought of yet. Because this is where actually the new area of design with technology is so, so, so important. 
So I can give you an example, like we all have smartphones, or many of us have smartphones that have accelerometers in them. Accelerometers mean that you can move with your phone, but how do we use that with our phones now? We use it to let us know that we're actually shifting the display. So that's, that's very, very useful. What if actually when we wanted to hail a cab, we would do this? And a taxi would come just like that, and or let's say that we wanted to actually communicate with our best friend, and we had a way that we moved, and our technology knows and can connect us with each other. So those are some of the kinds of ways that future technologies need to be developed by our, by our fresh ideas now. These kinds of new areas of sensory technologies, they really combine things like intuition, creativity, willing to kind of risk new ideas with pragmatic technical skills like soldering, for example, Arduino lily pads and or programming. But what's even more important is the idea that we can engineer or re-engineer in a way ourselves, our lives, and how we integrate and connect with people. So the kinds of skills that you probably have already, which is a desire to make something, a desire to make the world um, more engaged, for example, is a part of it. So these, uh, these places of technology are really blending two kinds of skills, our inner intuitive sensing skills and our pragmatic making doing skills. So DIY combines these kinds of things. And these things are actually very much um, knowledge that we can learn from the internet. There are multiple sites that actually look at um, getting packets that let you explore how you might actually begin to build this now and create some of these ideas and get that skill set in mind. So if you're a creative person and you know that you have new ideas and you also you like making things, you like working with your hands, Sensory Technologies is a really great place that you might think of actually working in the future. Google things like DIY technologies, make it your own, um, wearable technologies, how can I do this? There are many sites available that actually let you access materials and actually give you instructions. So you can just go down to the corner store, purchase, for example, some um, fabric that actually has metallic strips through it so you can make your own cables with fabrics and a sewing machine. Sensory technologies are really creative, but one of the other really important aspects of them is they have a great potency. They are able to actually change our own ethical relationship to ourselves and others and actually have social change um, and health and well-being as an aspect of what they do and as an aspect of what they're capable of. If we think of our senses as actually how we connect and understand the world, if we're actually designing with sensory technologies, we can actually shift how we understand social structures, cultural structures, political structures, and our own structures like friendships, for example, and family. So this area of work is both DIY, but it's not only DIY with needle and thread and a soldering iron, it's also DIY with the world we live in. I was really drawn into exploring sensory technologies even though nobody was doing it at the time, but even though that was serious for me, working with materials and working with creating also has a really playful aspect. It's fun, it's pleasurable, and there are many challenges, but when you have something that you can live and breathe in and it gives you joy, it actually makes it easier to deal with those challenges. And one of those challenges is, of course, how we're going to change the world we live in in the future.